Hi, this is Elliot. Today we get to work on another fun checkmate, the king, bishop, and knight versus a lone king. Now, did you know that's even possible? Well, if you remember from our previous topics around the king and rook checkmate, the king and two bishop checkmate, and now this one, there are three key principles that accomplish checkmate. First, if you will recall, bring our pieces to the center regardless of where this king moves. Two, once you're in the center, drive the opponent's king to any edge. And three, checkmate in a corner. Now there are a few nuances with the king, bishop, and knight, but it really boils down to those three steps. Are you ready? Let's go. Here we are, king, bishop, and knight. Here comes our king first. Multiple ways, but let's just walk our king up. And let's say they try to actually stop us from getting to the center. What will we do? One of the simplest ways to do it is to simply bring your bishop protected by your king. And notice it attacks both these squares. That forces the king to retreat. And we can now advance. As the king moves over, here we already get to a point where understand something. If we simply move our bishop forward check, the king could actually go this direction and we haven't really pushed the king anywhere else. Better bring all of your pieces together towards the center. Here comes the knight. Notice it attacks the center square. The bishop is here, the king nicely coordinated. And that is a key that you will consistently see. The pieces must coordinate together, work together in order to accomplish it. So let's say the king moves to here. Let's just take over the center, put our king in the middle. And let's say for this example, the king retreats. Now at this point, we can move our bishop forward, we could put our knight in the middle. There's many things that we could do. Let's just move our king sideways at this point, and let's say the king moves here. We'll move our bishop to the middle, and let's say the king moves back. Goal number one has been accomplished. Our king, our bishop, and our knight. All protected, all near the center. Step number two. How do we get that king to an edge of the board? If you will remember from the two bishop checkmate, we asked a simple question. If it is my opponent's turn, where will he move in order to stay close to the center? Well, let's take a look. In this position, the king, if it was his turn, would likely move here to stay as close to the middle as possible and avoid the dangerous edge. So, if it was this position and white to play, how do you take away that square without giving up other squares near the center? One of the simplest methods would now be bishop moves forward. You notice it takes away these two squares. If the king were to retreat, you could advance with your king, and the king moves sideways. Now we come to a little bit more tricky position. How do we continue to advance? If it is Black's turn and we ask the same question, Black could move here, and then we could repeat with our bishop forward, forcing the king up again. However, it is not Black's turn, and Black, I'm sure, doesn't want to be forced to the edge. He's going to try to run away and escape. So at this stage, with the bishop and knight, you do need to understand another concept. This is how the bishop and knight coordinate and create what we call a lock and trap the king. We bring the knight closer. Shall we say in this case, I'm gonna actually retreat your knight to this square. And the reason for this is that if the king tries to run away and the king moves here, you move your knight forward back in. And this is the key. The bishop and knight together, when they're both on the same color, Notice the squares that they control. The bishop covers the light squares, and because the knight, when it jumps, changes color of square, the knight, sitting on the same color as the bishop, controls the dark squares. Together, they create the fence. So the knight is controlling b6, the bishop is controlling b7 and c6, the knight is controlling d6. Now, the king really, unless he goes to the edge, has only one choice come back towards the middle. Now at this stage, 
once we've accomplished this, where's the king going to move? He could move this way, he could move this way. We need to take away these squares and get to the edge. A great move here is king forward. Notice the knight and bishop have controlled all these squares here, creating the fence. And we've taken away this square. Now the king, avoiding the edge, moves back this direction. Now in this case, a great move would simply be take away this next square. And you could do that with either one of these two moves. Now in this case, moving here would probably be the better move. And here is why. Do you realize that either square you move to, Black's king is forced to the edge. Which means that once he's forced to the edge, we're into step three. Get the king to a corner. And here comes an unusual situation that applies just to the bishop and knight checkmate. In order to checkmate this king, you must checkmate the king in a corner that is the same color as the squares your bishop is on. You might go, well, why is that? Let's find out. Imagine if the king is in this corner, opposite the color of your bishop, and you are very close and you are trying to checkmate. Let's imagine you are so close that your king is right here and your knight is over here. This way the king cannot escape. If you look closely, you will see that there is no way to absolutely force checkmate. If the king moves up here, here becomes the reason why. If you check the king, he is forced into the corner. And now, the only way to keep him trapped in the corner results in stalemate. However, if the king is in the same color as the bishop, then if your king is close by, let's say here, and let's suppose that your knight is once again trapping the king, as you can see, the knight is protecting this square right now. And your bishop, you can put it anywhere you wish. Notice what could happen. Here, with white to play, he could make a move like, uh, let's see, we'll go bishop here. King moves to the corner. Now we need to reposition our knight in order to control the dark square. So at that point, we could do a move such as knight here or better, actually, would probably be knight to, uh, let's go knight e8, king to uh, b8, knight to f6, king to a8. Now comes our check, king moves over, and we have knight checkmate. So the point there is that you must checkmate in the same color corner as your bishop. Otherwise, you cannot force it. So, if we go back to the position we were in, we had this position over here, like this, where it was white's choice where to move. Remember, black's king could come back towards the center. Where do we go, here or here? Well, because you now know that you want the king to be forced into the light squared corner, which one do you think is better? I hope you chose king e7, forcing the king closer and closer to this corner. So, assuming black knows he wants to avoid the corner, he's probably going to move here. Well, now which square must you control? You're right. Don't let him off the edge. Now let's move here, and you could be saying, but his king's going to escape towards the other corner. Well, he's trying to but he's stuck on the edge. Can you see how to trap the king from here? Yes? How about the bishop? Just take away the next square. The king goes back this direction, and now we need to bring our pieces a little bit closer if we're gonna accomplish this checkmate. How about knight over here, avoiding the king escape? If king retreats back here, how about we just check the king? And when the king moves toward the corner, let's protect our knight with our king. The king has only one square towards the corner, and we bring our king over closer. If the, Notice, that's to avoid the king escaping here. And when the king goes back, can you see the move to take away this square? 
Notice the knight protects this escape square. The king protects this one. But this square must be taken. Yes, you could do it this way. Why not do check? It also takes away this square. Notice that one by one, we're taking away the squares towards the corner. The king goes to the corner. Now let's reposition our pieces. The king comes back. Do you see the finish? Knight checks. King moves over. And checkmate. So you see there's really just three steps. Control the middle. Push the king to the edge using the lock with the bishop and knight and then push the king to the corner. Now I realize it can be a little challenging, and so I'm gonna give you one more piece. Imagine that when you bring your pieces towards the center of the board, your opponent knows that it's stalemate if his king is in the opposite corner and you try to checkmate. So what if his king, rather than staying in the middle, just runs all the way to that corner right from the start? What are you going to do? Well, once again, it's actually a fairly simple process once you understand it. Follow me quickly, because we're going to go fast here. Let's bring your king forward. And let's say he stays in the corner, and we come closer, and the king moves over. Now, here is the key starting point to drive this king all the way to the opposite corner. This corner, or this corner. In this case, we'll take him there. That is the square that you must get rid of. How do you control this square to force the king out of there? Where does your knight need to go? Did you find this square to check the king? Let's get there. Knight here. King moves over. Knight moves in. And the square is taken away. The king cannot go here because did you notice your bishop? And now the king moves over. Can you find the next move? Well, there's a couple little tricks here. Yes, you could play the knight here. But this is not using all your pieces. When you do this, your knight is so far on this side, his king's going to run out and try to get to the other corner. You must stop it. Instead, use each of your pieces together. Use your knight first, then use your bishop. You see, the trick is the following. Simply consider this. The bishop covers the light squares. It has no other option. The knight covers the dark squares. And your king tries to keep the king on the edge. Here is the pattern with your knight. After your bishop comes in and the king moves over, it is time to move your knight. You see, once your bishop's in place, it frees the knight to move. If the king comes back, you move the knight in to control the next square. When the king moves over, use your king. And when the king moves over here, block him again. And when he retreats, do you remember? Bishop checks, taking away the escape. Notice, knight covered the corner, the knight covered the next square, our bishop covering the light squares. Once the king moves, now that the bishop covers this square, this knight is free to move. It follows the same pattern. King over here, and this is actually the tricky moment where we must use what we call a tempo move. Just spend the tempo making it Black's turn, and if he comes back, here comes the same check. King moves over, king comes over, king moves over, king comes over, king tries to escape. We check, king's back towards the corner, and if you remember from earlier, the same pattern. King moves over, and now not stalemate, but once again a tempo move. King moves over, knight checks, king moves over, and check mate. Are we done? Almost. There is one last piece you must know. If we go back to our maneuver of chasing the king across the board, and we have this position where we take away the square, and the king moves back, and we move our bishop in, and the king moves over and our knight moves back. Remember how the knight did this pattern. In, out, in, out, in. What letter does that make? A big W. That's how you can remember how the knight maneuvers.
F7, E5, D7, C5, B7. That's how you move. So when we move to E5, if the king goes back to F8, there it is. But here's the trick. What if black goes, uh-oh, I see this pattern. Let me just run anyway. Let me try to get to the other corner. And let's suppose he runs here. Well, you cannot control this escape square. But watch the coordination of these pieces. The king moves over anyway. The king moves here. And you still do the W. The knight moves here. It's controlling that square. You could say, what does that have to do with the king? And the king goes, yes, I'm running away towards the center. But the amazing thing is, this king controls here. This knight controls these dark squares. There's only one actual escape square, and your bishop slides back just in time. The king is trapped. His king has to go back. He is trapped again. He must go back. And now your king takes away the escape square. He moves back over here, and you have returned to the exact same pattern we just had. The king goes over, your knight retreats, the king goes over, do you remember? Tempo move, king comes back, here comes your check, you finish your W, king goes over, king goes over, take the escape square, put the lock on him with check, king goes over, and just set up your checkmate. Stay on the W, do your tempo move, king back, check, and finally, checkmate. Phew, we've covered it all. Center, edge, corner, the lock with your bishop and knight on the same color, positions like this. We've covered corner to corner. We've covered the W with your knight. Now that we've done this, why don't you go out and try it? Find a partner, find a computer, find someone to practice with, and just try this out. See if you can do it, and feel free to post your comments.